Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fine. That's worth a hundred dollars. <laughs> All right. For Newton's law of cooling or heating, we're going to say the rate of change of the temperature of an object is proportional to the difference between the object's temperature and the temperature of its surroundings. Okay, so off to the side, go ahead and write capital T is going to be the temperature. And this is a function of T, so capital T is going to be temperature, lowercase t is going to be time. So temperature in terms of time. F, and that's the temperature, I guess I could say of the object. S is going to be the temperature of the surroundings. That was pretty good. Yeah. <coughs> okay, so using calculus notation, how do I write rate of change of the temperature of an object? Think back to like related rates. Mm -hmm. D capital T DT. Okay. D T D T. All right. So the rate of change of the temperature of an object is proportional to. They use K as the constant of proportionality. I think is what they call it. Proportional to <clears throat> what? Mm -hmm. So T minus S. So this mathematical equation is exactly what that sentence said. Those are the same. Okay. So, yes. All right, so this is a differential equation. We're going to go ahead and solve it, which means that we need to get capital T to the left side and anything with lowercase t to the right side. So we're separating it, integrating, all that stuff. So what should I do? So divide by t minus s, so and multiply by dt. Yeah. And we're going to be integrating each side.
This is technically a U substitution problem on the left because we have an inside, right? We have a T minus S. But I know that the derivative of T minus S is just going to be 1 because S is not a variable in the problem. It's a constant. The surroundings are a constant temperature. Does that make sense? Okay. So we're going to say, because we're in Calculus 2 now, we're officially in Calculus 2, not Calculus 1. Since we're in Calculus 2, we're going to say that we're going to keep it the same. I'm sure that if you get into really upper levels of math, then you start to mess with that type of equation. But we simplify it a little bit just because that's where our brains are right now. Okay, so we're going to say the S is not changing. That's a constant. So when we take the derivative of the bottom, it would just be 1. So technically, you should use U substitution, but we can get away with not using it. Does that make sense? Okay. So when I integrate the left side, I get 4 ln T minus S. Okay. And we're making sure to put that absolute value sign. We're saying that that has to be positive. Equals K T plus C. And then what do we do? We E both sides. Actually, we exponentiate both sides using an E. Exponentiate. No. No, yeah, exponentiate. When you put a base, raise everything to the exponent. Euler. Now the plus C is part of the exponent, so what does that? So it's, this is actually times e to the C. And then the e to the c, we say, okay, that's just the coefficient in front. Okay, so t equals c e to the k t plus s. And let's go ahead and plug in zero so that we can figure out what the starting temperature is. Does that make sense? Plug in zero for time equals zero. So I'm going to say T of 0 is CE to the K times 0 plus S. Okay, so I'm going to say that T sub 0 is C plus S, and by T sub 0, I mean the temperature at time T. Okay. So we're going to say that the formula we're going to use is temperature. And instead of putting C, how could I isolate C? I could subtract the S over, right? Okay. So I'm going to say C equals T sub 0 minus S. So I'm going to say T sub 0 minus S times E to the KT plus S. And that's my formula. Yeah. Two seconds. Two seconds. <laughs> I mean, you just have the first like parentheses. They make it hard to use two seconds. Two second. No, I. I don't know about minor. Minor, you would be like. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. Okay, so here's our example. A two liter bottle of soda at room temperature is placed in a fridge that is 38 degrees Fahrenheit. After half of an hour, the soda's temperature is 61 degrees Fahrenheit. What is the temperature after another half hour? How long does it take for the soda to cool to 50 degrees Fahrenheit? So, we have a starting temperature. What is the starting temperature? 70 degrees. We have the surroundings. What are the surroundings? 38 degrees. We have a set of information that is going to give us like an input and an output. Does that make sense? So they said after a half hour, 
the temperature is 61. So I'm going to go ahead and write that as a point. Input, output, right? So this is a lowercase t and a capital T. And since it's saying half hour instead of 30 minutes, I'm going to go ahead and do 25. Yeah. And, but, but you could do the problem on your way and just know that you're doing 20 minutes Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and just plug that in. So we have an S, we have a T sub zero, we have a lowercase t, we have a capital T. What are we missing in the equation? We're missing the K. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to plug everything in so that we can have K. Because K is going to be part of our formula for this specific problem. Does that make sense? So when we do these growth and decay problems, one of our first things we're going to do is solve for K always. So I have 16 with a capital T, T sub 0 is 70, S is 38. And E is Euler's number, K is what we're solving for. In case T is one half and S is 38. Okay. So 70 minus 38. Oh, And then this number two. Okay. You can make it a squared, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to figure out what this decimal is. Should I round in the middle of the problem? Yeah. Okay, so if I get this decimal in my calculator, then I'm not going to use this decimal to write down on paper, but I am going to store this as K. No. Mm -hmm. So we have T equals 70, well, we already know what 70 minus 38 is, it's 32, so I'm just going to use 32. So 32E, I'm going to put K with the circle around it, so I remember that's a stored number on my calculator. Are you guys okay with that? Okay, that is like Miss Rice notation. That's not a math thing. That's just how I choose to do it. No, they do that a lot too, where they, um, if you look at their answer keys, they will define, like they'll get a decimal in their calculator and they'll say that decimal equals A and then they put that in there. I circle mine because then I know I stored it and it's not just another variable. Like, I don't want you guys to think of that as variable K. I want you to think of that as like, ah, oh, that's in my calculator. Yeah. They would have just written KT and called it K. Yes? You have to tell them that, like... So, like, once I, I, once I say this, yeah. then I can use it there. But you don't have to say circle K equals the stored variable. No. You don't. Mm -mm. No, like, they'll do stuff like they would say, like, K equals this or whatever, and then they'd go over and put, like, K inside the integral. And they do that on the answer key all the time, and then you just know that's what they did. So. All right, so we've got this. Now, what are the questions that we're answering? Okay, so first half hour is one half. For another half hour, what are we going to plug in? One. Okay, so I'm going to say temperature after one hour, 32, e to the k, times 1, plus 38. 
Um, you could do T sub one. This is just me using function notation, saying I'm plugging one in. So 32 e to the k times one, I guess so the temperature after one hour is approximately 54.531 degrees Fahrenheit. We're making sure we're doing three decimal places because when I was grading the finals, like eight people did two decimal places and then got no points for the answer. And they had the answer right. It was painful, you guys. It was painful to mark those down. So make sure you always have three decimal places or more, three or more. Okay, so we answered the first question. How long does it take for the soda to cool to 50 degrees? Yes, so we're going to go back to our problem right here, and we're going to plug in 50 for the final temperature. And this time we're solving for the lowercase t. So minus the 38 over. So that was 12. Um, and actually, if you wanted, if you don't like that k with a circle around it, you could have just put negative 0.66 since that's the decimal and just know that you're using the perfect number, not the rounded number, that would be okay as well. Um, divide by 32. Isn't that for normal I would store it just because it's more accurate. Yeah. Um, sometimes you'd be okay with that. Most times I'd argue you'd be okay with that. But anytime you ended up multiplying that, that rounded decimal by a really big number, that's when it starts to get off. So it kind of depends on the problem. So then we've got an LN. And then I've got to divide by that square number. So LN twelve divided by 32 divided by my square number. Is how long it would take, so a little bit less than an hour and a half for it to reach 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow, how fun. Mm -hmm. 89 minutes. Yep. Okay, so... If they said something like, what equation are you using in this problem? I would say the equation that I used in this problem is 32E LN 23 over 32, sorry, there was a 2 in front of that, T plus 38. If they wanted to know what equation did you use to solve this problem, this is what I would say. I would have the K plugged in there with all that nastiness. But if you don't want to write that for every step of the problem, I understand. Because that's a lot to write for K every single time. Yeah. I'm pretty sure on my answer T I wrote all that out too. <laughs> that's commitment. All right, next page. The compound interest formula, anyone remember what it is? Uh, it's I'll give you a hint. One plus. This one, but compound interest is never minus. Oh, this is not division, actually. There's an N up there. T is part of the exponent. Oh, it's P. We got a variable right here. Rice. 
yeah. I don't know why I whispered rice. That was the only word I could think of that started with R. <laughs> Me. Me. So P is the principle, which is the starting. Pert is one of the other ones. It's continuous. What's the Compounded continuously is pert. So you were kind of right. But compound interest. Yeah, this is the one where it can compound daily or compound monthly or compound quarterly or compound semi-annually, all the different options. So P is the principal, which is the starting amount. R is the rate, which is given, you t given to you as a percentage typically, and you have to convert it into a decimal. N is the number of times it's compounded per year. Uh, T is number of years. To the Naiha row times. <laughs> Compounded continuously. Grace, you know this one. Grace, what is this one? <laughs> no. Not P equals. Don't write it down. Don't write it down. I type it. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Now, if you say the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus r over n to the nt, that's the exact same as e to the rt, because this is your um, approximation of e. There's a proof for that somewhere. But, yeah, um, so if somebody finds, if you are interested and you want to look it up tonight and find a relatively short, not a 20 minute, like a couple minute, let's not get bored, relatively short online video explaining this, feel free to send it to me. And if it's good and we watch it in class, I'll give you extra credit. Ooh, get your math nerd on tonight. This, explaining, explaining where E comes from. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Oiler. 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 I'm going to bring a paintball gun to school tomorrow. I'm just going to shoot everyone who says it. You were. I'm going to shoot you right up between the eyes. I'm not even going to. I'm not even going to look at you. I'm just going to. Yes. All right, here's the example problem. <laughs> we are investing $1,000 into a CD, which is a certificate of deposit account, for three years at 6% interest. We want to find the total amount of money in the certificate of deposit account if the interest is compounded yearly, quarterly, monthly, and continuously. All right, so what is the P value? What is the R value? Six. Yeah, so 6% gets rewritten as 0 0.06. What is the time? Three years. Okay, what are the ends that we're going to use? Uh, one, four, twelve, and then continuously. So many students tell me that quarterly is 25. I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> there are four quarters in a dollar. Quarter does not mean 25. Whew. All right. So, so for yearly, what should I be writing? Uh, no. I'm, I'm just fixing it for you as you. 
Um, and then we've got n is 1 times 1 year, times 3 years, just kidding. Okay. So go ahead and type that in. I already have the answer, so I'm going to let you do it. Why am I using two decimal places this time? Cents. Dollars and cents. Okay, quarterly. Oh, if you place down a money problem, can you do three decimals? Can you get it wrong? I don't know. They, if they, um... He said doo doo. Um, so, on FRQs on the AP exam, you default to three decimal places. If they want you to round to a whole number because it's a living thing, they will tell you to do that. I'm guessing if they want you to round to two decimal places because it's cents, they will tell you to do that. That's my guess. Although, to be honest, I don't really see money problems typically on the FRQs. Is that a joke about how much money we make? Not necessarily. Depends how mad you're getting right now. Never. My dad and I were talking yesterday um, about buying houses because I want to buy a house this year. And he was telling me that when he, when my parents bought their current house, they bought when I was six weeks old. And the interest rate on the mortgage was 10.75%. <laughs> what? That's so high. Like right now it's like 4% or 3 point. Can you, 30, 30 something years ago, it was 10.75% interest on your mortgage. That's so terrible. I was like, oh man. <laughs> Thank goodness it's 30 years later. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. Oh. Twice. My parents' house is paid off. Like legit, they don't pay a mortgage anymore. I was like, you guys don't pay rent? That's crazy. Yeah. All right. You guys type it in the next one. Monthly. Yeah, except with rent, you actually don't get anything out of it. So. What'd you say? Crazy, right? Mm 
<coughs> Sweet. So there's our notes.